Okay, so you've practiced all of your thick and thin lines and how to create your leaf shapes and petal shapes, whether you're using a dagger brush, round brush, or an angle brush. Hopefully you've been doing that a lot. And now it's time to put together some of those strokes to create a wildflower. Now the flower we're going to do first doesn't really have a name. To me it kind of looks a little bit like the cross between a clover flower and maybe a small little peony. I'm not sure. And it's, it's just a whimsical flower. You can call it whatever you like. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to use a dagger brush on this one. This is a quarter inch dagger brush. Got plenty of water on it. And let's pick up some pink, of course, my favorite color. And I'm just going to start by doing one of those leaf shapes that we practice. But because I'm using color now, it's going to turn into a petal shape. So I'm not going to hold the brush. This is the paper. I'm not going to hold the brush this way. I'm laying that angle down on the paper. And I'm just going to pull towards me, apply a little pressure to spread out the bristles, and then I'm going to bring it up to a point. So. It's going to be on the point, or on the thin line, apply pressure back up to the point. And depending on how long you drag your petal, that will determine how big your flower is going to be. So I'll just do one and show you. Okay, so laying my brush down, pulling, and then back up to the chiseled point more paint and I'm going to go right next to it and do another one. You can leave a little gap in the middle, that's okay, or they can come, they can touch, it doesn't matter. Push, pull it towards me. And you're going to want to try to end them around the same spot. I don't want this one ending down here where that one ended up there. This will be the base of my flower. The tops can be different heights, but the base you kind of want to come bring them together. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on either side again. And you'll notice when I do this side, I'm pulling the brush and I'm pulling it toward the center. So I'm doing that action. And when I do that side, well, I'm not going to do that action because I don't want it to go off in that direction. I'm going to pull it again toward the center. So we're continually pulling toward the center. Okay, so let's do... Another one over here, pull, let those bristles spread out and then up to the point over this side, press down, I'm pulling towards me and then up to a point. And then I want to have the illusion of a petal kind of cascading downwards. So to do that, rather than pull towards me like this, I want that petal to look like it's fallen down. So I'm gonna go this way. And actually, let me give you a little point. It's perfectly fine to move your paper around. For me, because I've been doing this for a while, I can easily do that. But for a lot of you, it's a weird angle. It's, it's easier to pull towards you than to pull push against you, you know, away from you. So feel free to just turn your paper if it means you can get a better angle. So on this side, it's much easier to just pull towards me than this one was for a lot of you. So I'm just pushing down, let the bristle spread, and then back up to a point. Okay, now I turn it back. So do you see what we've got here, this sweet little flower? And we can come back. And I can pick up, I'm picking up a little bit darker red and some water, and I can just touch the base here. Now with watercolor, your flowers, your colors are going to dry lighter than what they look like when they're wet. So where some may say, oh, that looks too dark. Don't worry, it's going to dry lighter. So I wouldn't worry about that. So and you can add, use the very point of your brush to just add a little fun lines here and there. Okay, I'm going to pick up my pink again. And I'm going to do another little bud. To do a bud, you're really just going to do 
a couple of these same strokes, but just tight together and smaller. One, two. So then you have just a little bud. Now something else I like to do, especially when I work with pinks, I like picking up a little bit of orange. So I've got a little orange on my brush and just with the tip here, you can just put in a little orange, but see how it gives it that really pretty, I don't know if you can see that, kind of corally look. And you can actually go right over top, right over top where you were and add that little bit of orange. Isn't that pretty? Just adds a little something something. Okay, so you've got a big flower, a little bud, and you can do as many of these as you want to create a bouquet. Now I'm just going to pick up some green. Uh, let me add a little yellow. And you can mix your watercolors just like you mix acrylics and oils to create you know, custom, custom reds and pinks and greens. Okay, so with the point of my brush, I'm flipping my brush around. I'm no longer using it like this. I'm flipping it around so the angle is up at the top because I only want to use this little point right now. I'm just going to just start dabbing in some color right here, almost like a little ball there on the end. Get some more paint. And I want to show you something. If you touch into the wet, pink part, this will bloom up into that pink. It'll bleed. That's fine. That actually can be a very pretty look with watercolor, especially the whimsical watercolors we're doing. So don't freak out if that happens to you. You don't always want it to happen a lot because it can get really muddy on certain things. But if it happens a little bit, that's fine. If you don't want it to happen at all, don't let those two colors touch or let your pink dry totally before you come in with your stems. Now I'm just going to do the same here, just dab, pick up some more color, and then I'm just going to use the point, and remember we, I showed you how to do your thick and thin lines, so here's where you're going to do a line, just, and I don't usually do one long stroke, I usually kind of do a choppy, a choppy kind of line. To me, it tends to look more natural. And I'll bring one off of here. If you ever notice your paint not coming off the brush nicely, it usually means you don't have enough water in your brush. Okay, let me darken that a little. Now on my buds, I usually like to use the little point and just put some little tendrils up the side. I don't know, I just think that looks pretty. When this dries totally, I'll do one maybe up the middle. Okay, now let's do some leaves. So you can use the point and create a nice line there. And then remember the strokes in the first video where you push and then up to the chiseled edge. Pick up some more paint. Push up to the chiseled edge. And you have a nice little leaf. You can do another one right there. Push up to the chiseled edge. And you can leave it like that. Or you can make it a little thicker. And just keep adding your leaves anywhere you want. Push up to the chiseled edge. Push and up to the chiseled edge. Put some on this side. Drag it. Make a little stem. And again, turn your paper if it's if it's going to be easier for you. For some reason, for a lot of people, it's easier to always be pulling towards you than to be pushing away. So apply pressure and up on the chiseled edge. Now I can just leave that one just like that. 
I'll put another little one right down here. Apply pressure up to the chiseled edge. Pressure and up to the chiseled edge. Let me turn this around. Okay, so there is a really good start on flowers, and you see how easy that was. I mean, it's basically the same stroke for the leaf that you're doing for the petal. Now, something about watercolors. If you want to come back, like lots of times when I'm painting, I want maybe would want this part darker, where the petals come together, the color would be more concentrated. Well, if this is all still wet, it's very difficult to come back in with darker color because it's just gonna bleed together. And then you're gonna come back in with more and it's just gonna bleed out. It won't stay there because it's just gonna wick into the other wet parts of your paint. So if you want to start adding layers, let your, maybe keep a little blow dryer handy and let those layers dry. I mean, I can feel, okay, this is pretty dry. So let's see. I can add some deeper color right to the center where the petals would come together and be more concentrated. And up here also. In fact, I'm gonna darken this whole petal. I'm just gonna go right over it. There we go. Now, another fun little tip you can do, glazing. These leaves were just made with a straight green, but lots of times in leaves, I love that little hint of a blue. So I'm just gonna wet my brush, pick up a little blue, not too concentrated, nice and watery. And if I just go over this, it gives it that little blue green. I don't know if you can see that really well. You just have a little blue-green tinge there. That's really pretty. Basically, it's the same thing I did with the orange up here. Just add a little blue. I think I want this green a little darker, so I'm gonna pick up, here we go, a little bit darker green. Okay, so there's your first sweet little wildflower. So just start practicing these flowers a lot. You can make them in whatever configuration, how you can continue to add petals to it if you want to. Um, but have fun with it, create yourself a little bouquet. Just practice this flower over and over and over again. And uh, we'll get ready and I'm gonna set up another video to do the next flower. So I'll see you then.